Hi, I'm Maya. And I'm Sophia. And our topic is about Loretta Walsh, the first woman in the Army. Loretta Walsh was the first woman to officially serve in the United States military. Countless women have served the United States as nurses, but it is Loretta Walsh's exceptional ability and service as a Navy woman during World War I that forever changes the perception of women. According to woman history, in World War I, women served the U.S. Army in traditional roles as nurses, seamstresses, and cooks for troops in camp. Loretta Walsh was born on April 22, 1896 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She had no idea she would break barriers for women all around the world. On March 17, 1917, Walsh subsequently became the first woman U.S. Navy Petty Officer when she was sworn in as Chief Yeoman on March 21, 1917. According to HuffPost.com, on March 19, 1917, the Navy Department authorized enrollment of women in Naval Reserve with ratings of yeoman, radio electrician, or other essential ratings, becoming the first branch of the United States Armed Forces to allow enlistment by a woman in a non-nursing capacity. There are about 476,000 women in the Army now, but the population is still growing today, and Loretta Walsh took a huge part in that. There are 1,018,000 men in the Army, and if you ask me, women are doing a pretty good job of catching up to them. According to HuffPost.com, in 1917, women had served in the U.S. military as nurses since 1901. But despite their uniforms, Army and Navy nurses were civilian employees with a few benefits. As a non-nurse, Loretta was the first of 13,000 World War I yeoman females, entitled to receive the same benefits and responsibilities as men. Twelve days after Loretta Walsh got sworn in as Chief Yeoman, President Woodrow Wilson had declared a war, which the Congress did on April 6, 1917. War ended on November 11, 1918. Walsh and other female yeomen continued in service during the first months after November 1918. Armistice was assigned. According to AmericaComesAlive.com, when World War I began in Europe in 1914, the United States hoped to stay out of the conflict. But by 1917, America's American sentiment was changing. On January 31st, 1917, Germany announced that it would resume unrestricted war warfare on all ships, including American ones. Shortly after, German U-boats attacked four different American ships, resulting in the deaths of 15 Americans. According to AmericaComesAlive.com, her position change was as a result of a change in policy by the Navy. As of March 19, 1917, the Navy became the first branch of the U.S. Armed Forces to allow women to enlist in a non-nursing capacity. The Naval Reserve brought women in as what they referred to as yeomen, also referred to as yeomanettes. Their duties ranged from clerical work in recruiting to production jobs in ammunition factories as well as design work, drafting, translation, and radio operating responsibilities. According to peoplepill.com, as a result of the post-World War I naval reductions, the number of yeomen declined steadily, reaching just under 4,000 by the end of July 1919, when Walsh and the remaining yeomen were all released from active duty. Walsh continued on inactive reserve status, receiving mo modest retainer pay until the end of her four-year enlistment on March 17, 1921. According to peoplepill.com, notably both men and women were earning $28.75 per month, one instance of equal pay for both genders. Women who became yeomanettes were also given the same benefits as men of comparable rank, another unique feature for the time. Walsh died on August 6, 1925, and is buried at Oliphant St. Patrick's Cemetery. Walsh fell victim to influenza in the fall of 1918 and later contracted tuberculosis. Her monument reads, April 22, 1896 to August 6, 1925, woman and patriot, first of those enrolled in the U.S. Naval Service, World War 1917 to 1919. Her comrades dedicate this monument to keep alive forever memories of the sacrifice and devotion of womanhood. In memory of Walsh and her bold actions, the official history program of the Department of the Navy identifies March 21, 1917 as a date in American naval history. Annually, in recognition of Walsh's historic service, a wreath laying ceremony is held at her gravesite on this date. In conclusion, Loretta Walsh broke barriers in so many ways, one of them being that she helped women fight for our country and not just sit back and watch men do all the work. 
She was part of the reason that women have several rights today. Her devotion towards the military was exceptional. She wanted to make it better for women all around the world. She wanted to help them make a difference. All her hard work paid off. Now women can pretty much do whatever they want and be whatever they want. All thanks to the women around the world who helped make that possible. The End